acclaimed political economist, Professor Pat Utomi, has vowed to sue Mr. Bayo Onanuga, special advisor on information and strategy to President Bola Tinubu. Utomi, in a post on his verified ex-handle, expressed disappointment in Onanuga over allegation that Utomi is one of the organizers of the planned nationwide protest. He advised Onanuga to withdraw his statement or provide evidence of his claim. He also warned that he would sue him for 500 billion naira if he failed to back up his assertion. Well, for more on this, I'm joined on the line from Lagos by Professor Pat Utomi. He is a fellow and international policy scholar at the Woodrow Wilson Center, the congressionally chartered nonpartisan think tank in Washington, D.C. Prof, welcome to the program. Thank you so very much. It's a pleasure to be able to chat with you. Wonderful. Um, so let's start with the allegation by Mr. Onanoga. You have heard all that he said. Share with us your own side of the story uh, briefly. Well, I'm not so sure <laughs> what there is to share from my side because my side is blank. Um, a couple of days ago, I was in Washington, D.C. I had just finished from a very important policy seminar. And um, I'm working on a new book and I had distributed questionnaires to uh, senior civil servants in Abuja. And I was trying to get feedback so that I could do content analysis and all of that uh, in course of that work. And I called one permanent secretary, and I can mention his name, it's not a big deal, uh, Gabriel Aduda. And I said to him, I've not received uh, your um, response, you know, to my questions, the questionnaire. And he says, oh dear, I'm sorry. And I said, okay, I'm coming to Nigeria. I'm going to, as chairman of PATH, Path Track, the Pan-African Trade and Investment Committee, private sector, uh, for the African Union, um, I'm going to be at the AU Summit in Accra. Uh, to make presentations on path track and strategies for uh, enhancing intra-African trade and, and all of that. And um, that when I come into Nigeria, I would get in touch with him. And he said, oh, how long are you going to be in Nigeria? Uh, and he jokingly just added, you know, I says, in, in August, we may have uh, flight disruptions uh, because of uh, 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 protests. I said, which protest? That was how I heard about protest. And to then wake up one day and find that I was one of the planners of that protest just makes you wonder what has happened to Nigeria. How can the state, its agents, be people who fabricate information, spread falsehood, and all of that? I said, well, anyway, what's the point? Let's ignore them. And I was going to just completely ignore the matter. Uh, and I, I laughed, you know, because, uh, you know, growing up in Ibano, we used to make all kinds of jokes. And uh, uh, one of the jokes, you know, came from uh, Alawada, Babasala. I said, Oko si garawa, Oko si garawa, Agba lagba akon. Oko si garawa. I said, this Agba lagba is really an Agba lagba akon. <laughs> Can't you think? Right. Then I joked and forgot about it. Uh, okay, Prof. <laughs> but, just, uh, just to be sure, just to be sure, Prof. Were you involved in any activities that might have been misconstrued as being involved in planning this protest? How can I be involved in any activity that can be misconstrued? How do you misconstrue an activity? Uh, by the way, I don't want anybody to get the impression that I have anything against this, the, the protest. It's a right of citizens. I'm just saying that, suggesting that I was planning one of any type with this or any other group. It didn't make sense because, first of all, I'm not around. I'm involved in very serious work out of the country. I'm on just a few days' visit to the country. Uh, and, you know, I didn't even abat my mind to the possibility of uh, any protest. So there could not be any activity that can link me to it. But if there's a protest and they invite me, my goodness, I would love to be in front. Really would love to be in front. I mean, we need to tell the truth about what's gone wrong in Nigeria. 
And one of the ways you do it is by speaking up. Look, I was in Cairo during the Arab Spring. I went to do work at the Africa, Africa Exim Bank. And I, I would sit in my hotel room and see the concierge come back, very happy, show me photographs of how he was carrying his son on his shoulder. And I would say, wow, people need to speak up. 50 years of my life has been about that. So if I was involved, I am not going to deny it. I will be very proud of it. The point is nobody told me about it. I didn't know about it. If I knew about it, I would be very proudly celebrating it and leading it. But I didn't know anything about it. So that's the simple truth. About the Arab Spring, you know, eventually it didn't quite turn out the way people expected. So ma making reference to, to that, do you yeah. think that Nigeria needs that? Or what is your reading of what's going to happen in Nigeria following the frustrations of every people? Situation, every, situation, yeah, every situation is different. The outcomes will be different depending on how people organize themselves. Look, again, anybody who's been following my tweets will know that a couple of weeks ago, I was in Washington when uh, Ruto came visiting. And I felt very proud of Ruto, and I tweeted my praise and support for him. Then the trouble started. Anybody who will recall will know that my tweet went, Ruto, Ruto, I was rooting for you yesterday, but this is not how to deal with protest. And then I said, look, there's a gap in Africa. African leadership is a disgrace, generally. You are providing some hope. Don't lose it. Shooting your people is not how to respond to your future view for them. Listen to them. Sit down with them and talk to them. That was is, my tweet a few weeks ago. There is an hashtag going around, and Mr. Bayo Onologa says mm. that any attempt to end this government using that hashtag amounts to treason. How would you respond to that? Since you, you already, you know, does Mr. Obama and Onuga know how to define, does he know the meaning of treason? I, as a senior executive of a multinational, led protests on the street of Lagos that was joined by many of those who work in this government. That was my democratic right, even in a military regime, I exercised it. Who is by Onuga to talk about treason? What does he know treason means? Let him come, let me teach him political science. I have degrees there. And I was explain to him what uh, a treason is. So you have said that you will sue him. Where are you on that? Uh, how many days? For or how, 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 long, how, how long are you going to give to him to retract the statement and then you move? I'm going to give him enough leeway because sometimes, you know, you need to wake up from sleep. I'm going to give him enough room to wake up and realize his mistake and then speak truth to himself. If not my lawyers in Nigeria, my lawyers in the US. Look, people forget that I was one of those who fought very hard to bring about the International Criminal Court, ICC. I, there's no denying it. When Abacha was in office, two assassination attempts from Abacha that I escaped in this country. And then I went on sabbatical, just like I have gone now. I was at, I was at the Harvard Business School. I met editorial boards of American newspapers. I was traveling around the U.S. canvassing an international criminal court for, African, for leaders that act in certain ways that amount to genocide against their people. When I went before one of the greatest newspaper, newspapers in the world, one of the, the, at the time, the Christian Science Monitor in Boston, January, cold January 1997, and laid my case for why we should take leaders to an international criminal court, they said to me, Pat, look, that can never happen. Yeah, being idealistic. Two years later, the Rome Treaty passed and the International Criminal Court. If I have to go on the rounds for another one, I will. But we need to bring sanity back to this country. Agents of the state can be sources of falsehood and hate speech. It's not acceptable. Nigeria can't fall that low. Uh, so it's, it's interesting your name. It's interesting your name came up. Why do you think you were targeted in the first place? <laughs> Mio Mo. I don't know. You know, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. I can't imagine. Well, 
maybe people sometimes wake up in their dreams and they see certain faces. <laughs> and they think, ah, this face must be chasing me. You know, you know the way you dream and you fall and something is chasing you and you fall and you get up and you are running. Maybe that's what happened. Because I can't imagine how. How? You know that, I mean, everybody knows that they tap phones. So, at the very least, I would have spoken to these organizers. I still don't know who they are, by the way. But whoever they are, I know that I have not spoken to any of them. Uh, so, at least tapping my phone, which I know they do, would have told them that I have never spoken to these people. So, it was just purely a figment of imagination, deliberately, deliberately designed to distract people, to uh, put fear in people. Ha! Huh. I said, you know me that I'm not intimidated. I can never be intimidated. They've known me 50 years. I've been on the barricades in this country for the common good of all. Never. Uh, eh? in, my, in my language, they say, I need you. Okay, so. No the fear. Ma I can't the, fear nothing. The man you, you work with in the 2023 <laughs> presidential election, Mr. Pito, but he's also facing the same thing. He's actually asked Mr. Nanuga to withdraw the statement within 72 hours. So he's literally in the same boat with you. Hmm. He's targeting the Labour Party. Okay. And he demanded an apology as well. Oh. Okay. Now, I've not seen his own statement, you know. But, by the way, I just flew into the country. I just left the, the AU meeting in Accra, Ghana. I have meetings with very senior people in Washington on Monday. Uh, so, my attention span has been a little uh, uh, crammed. Uh, 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 so, I've not had a ch chance to get the details of what he has done or not done, but I will definitely get the details. I hope he's not asking for more money than me because he has more money than me. He doesn't need as much as I need. He let him take small. I, I, I think I need the bigger chunk of the money. Uh, so, I, I think he said he's going to sue with 5 billion naira. Um, uh, uh, am I correct? Ah, I okay. think 5 billion. That, that makes sense. Ah, okay, that's good. He, he needs small, I need more. Right, but I know that you have taken time to think about this. Do you think these accusations are part of a, a larger agenda? Oh, you see that I'm pushing it, and I will take it to the International Criminal Court and other court, is that it's obviously, from what people are saying to me, a deliberate sowing of seed for trumped-up charges of treason. And that's why my, my, my claim is 500 billion. Um, I am of a certain global standing as an academic, and my price, my premium, my value, uh, people have a sense for it. And so when something endangers my life, the appropriate pre premium needs to be put on that thing that endangers my life, because it seems like the objective is to put my life in danger. That's what the objective seems to be. And nobody puts Patrick Tommy's life in danger and gets away with it. He will come back. Let, let me tell you something. Somebody called me from Adamawa, a retired army officer, and said to me, I hear you've been arrested. I said, for what? I said, ah, they said they've arrested you for, for planning protests. I said, me? No, 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 nobody did that. I just arrived in the country an hour ago, and all the officials at the airport were greeting me. No, no, no such thing. I don't think so. He said, ah. We heard you were arrested and we're getting ready to start rioting tomorrow, which is today. They were getting ready to start rioting that they arrested Patrick Tommy. I said, no, please don't riot. Nobody arrested me. You know? So I, I think people should be more responsible that dealing with 200 million lives cannot be reduced to a joke. Right. The, the Minister of Information... This is what they're trying to reduce governance to. The Minister of Information and National Orientation has just said today that the president is going to address uh, people's challenges and um, he's told the protesters to shelve the protest, you know, he will do more. Should anyone listen to the president or do you think they will listen to him? I don't know. Citizens have a right to decide what they want, what they think, what they should do. I know what I will do as Pat who told me. I'm not in Nigeria, unfortunately, at this time. If I were in Nigeria, I would be planning my own protest. I don't need to be part of people by protest. I would be the one planning it, you know. Because I've done that several times in the course of my life. 
so you're not in Nigeria, but you've been following, you know, events here, obviously. Do you think that the government, yeah. the measures that are being put in place so far are enough or sufficient or they know what they are doing? What is your view? Look, the view is that we have a failed National Assembly which has not managed to help the executive branch govern well. I've been a rubber stamp National Assembly that stopped thinking a long time ago. They've reduced Nigeria to a kangaroo place. We used to talk about Banana Republic. Nigeria is much worse than a Banana Republic today because of a National Assembly that cannot stop an executive branch that doesn't know where to stop. That's the problem we have right now in Nigeria. And if we don't wake everybody up, what I'm actually planning is a, pro, a, a recall of all members of National Assembly. I'm trying to get groups around the country to begin to gather signatures to recall every member of the National Assembly because we don't have a National Assembly. The executive branch has not shown responsibility in the way it has used Nigeria's resources. In these 48 hours that I've been in Nigeria or less, I've taught a class at the Lagos Business School this morning. And I was saying to them, I had the Shell case, I had the NMPC uh, case, uh, and I was saying to people, read these cases, tell me, does it make sense that people are functioning like this? Tell, you know, just tell me, I'm, just, I'm not saying anything, just you from reading the cases, tell me. We have allowed our country to be badly run. I'll give you a, a simple example that I reacted to. When I saw the story that they were going to massively bring in food because people are going to protest, there is no food and all of that, I said, my goodness, have we forgotten history? That's how we killed cash crop economy, cocoa, palm produce, and all of that. When the non-terrible goods sector rose as a result of revenues from crude oil, and we spent the revenues giving construction contracts to Julius Berger and all of these, and the cocoa farmer in Ileoluji came to Lagos because he was getting little for his cocoa uh, crop and could be a messenger in NMPC or be um, a, 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 a construction worker for Julius Berger. And then oil prices went down. And then you couldn't pay Julius Berger. And then they laid these guys off and it was too late for them to go back to Leoluji. So they became unemployed people on the streets of Lagos. I say, you want to go in and kill agriculture in Nigeria with this kind of policy? And I thought they were going to start patrutomy has come again. Thank God, Aki Adishino said the same thing. Thank God. It would have been, oh, it's patrutomy again. You see, we need inputs from thinkers, serious thinkers, to run our country well. This knee jerk on the pants go at running government. It's not the way it is supposed to be. Okay. We're dealing with 200 million lives. We're dealing with a country that is going to be there for many, many more years. Prof, recalling the entire National Assembly, anyway. uh, recalling the entire National Assembly, there are 109 senators, 360 reps members. That's a tall order. It, it sounds daunting. Is this just a dream? Or do what, you what think, value have do they you added? Think this, do you think this is achievable? No, let's talk practical now. You, you've got to try. You've got to try. You may not achieve 100%, but you've got to try. You've got to say to them, National Assembly does not exist. Our country is crippled because we don't have a National Assembly. All they're doing is, what can I get out of this? The National Assembly of the 1960s, operating from their roofs in Legico Flats and in Onikon in Lagos, and very little, came in, kept their jobs as principals of high schools, like a Newtonian High School, Unyeka Wenu's father, and as farmers and as lawyers. And our country got good input in terms of lawmaking. Today, they're sitting there in Abuja. They do nothing. They stand up and grandstand on nonsense. I watch them and I'm so ashamed of myself. Watch C-SPAN and watch the debates in the U.S. Senate. I tell people that if you serve in the banking subcommittee in the U.S. Congress, you're as good as a professor of banking. By the time your uh, uh, 
legislative aides do quality research and pass to you, and you do your homework, study them, you start up and you debate issues, and you add value to policy. This is what the policy scholar Aaron Wildavsky talks about when he talks about complex redundancy. The process goes through this redundant quality addition when it goes from this committee to that committee to the main uh, house, uh, the Congress and Senate, and comes out and it stands the test of time. Okay. But here, what are we doing? Right. What are we doing? Professor Pat Utomi, thank you so much for being on Arise Prime Time. A great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, that's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching.